Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool repair video for you today. This is uh, a joust game that we repaired a while back. You may have seen the video of us doing that. And our buddy Adam said he took it back down to the beach and it worked for a little while and then it stopped working again. So we're going to check it out and see if we can get it up and running again. Because we did such a good job getting it up and running the first time. It just didn't last for forever. So... Uh, we'll see how quick we can fix it, get it doing its thing. I don't even know what's wrong with it. I heard that it had some red lines in it or something like that, which sounds like RAM or something or whatever. But we're going to figure it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to open the back doors and just make sure everything's still in place and nothing did anything crazy during transport, like the monitor board falling into the bottom of the game or anything like that. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll try to plug it up and see what happens. Okay, so it's a nice clean little game. It's in pretty good shape. Monitor looks cool. I don't see anything out of place there. Um, there were a couple extra uh, coin max in it. And they've, on the last video, we were messing with the power supply, but they've taken the power supply out and put a uh, switching power supply in. But uh, yeah, everything looks cool. Everything's still in its place. So we'll plug this sucker up and see what we can get it to do. Okay, so yeah, it's up and it's got the lines through all of the text or all of everything, but it is playing. It's just got lines in the background. Okay. All right, so we want to see if we can go into any kind of test mode, if they've still got any of that hooked up. There's no sound either. Bookkeeping. Okay, we're in the. Uh, let's go and test. All ROMs okay. RAM test follows. Press advance to exit. I believe it just keeps doing this. That pattern like that though actually looks good to me. Notice you don't see the lines. It says press advance to exit. I think it just keeps running it until you do exit it. No RAM errors detected. Okay. No CMOS RAM errors detected. Sound line one. Sound is working. Switch test. All right. Switches are all good. Color RAM test. Seems cool. Hmm. All right, so now we're back to lines. Okay, yeah, so that screen there doesn't look right. Red, green, blue. There we go. I think it actually says something about lines indicate problems whenever you do the the. Uh, Vertical bars indicate error, it says. So it's showing you like gradients of red, gradients of green, gradients of blue. I always wonder why there's only two blue. There's three reds, three greens, but they only do two blue. So red and green have lines in them, but blue doesn't. If that makes any sense. All right, so let's see if we can figure out why that is. 
All right, we are looking in the schematics. Now, here is my answer for why there's three red and three green, but two blue. If you look at the, this is the red color transistor, the green color transistor, and the blue color transistor, and these go to the pins on the edge of the board and send the signal out to the, um, out to the monitor. Okay, so if you look, coming out of this, three lines that go to red, three lines that go to green, and two that go to blue. So I don't, I still don't know why it's like that, but that's how the schematics show it to it. So back a little bit, there are these two chips, which are the color RAM. So they are 7489 color RAM chips. Now, that could be the problem. Um, but it's uh, we're getting kind of some weird stuff. I mean, it's showing if if it were a RAM problem, I would expect it to be more like everything on the screen. And you saw how it could it can show a completely red screen, a completely green screen, a completely blue screen. I don't know. I'm not positive that it's the color RAM. If you go pack past that, it goes to this chip here, 2C, which is a 74 LS257. And then if you notice, there's these four lines coming into it that say serial, serial 2, serial 1, serial 0. So serial 0, 1, 2, and 3. Right? And then they come from um, these little tags here because that's coming from this other uh, schematic sheet. So they come from up here, which is 2H. All right. And then, so those are the signals that end up at the color RAM eventually and then come, go out of, the, you know, to, to create the video. And then before that, you get these signals here. So you get these four that are A1, A2, A0, A1, A3, A2, and A3. Um, no. <laughs> A1, A2, A3, and A4, and B1, B2, B3, and B4. Now, as I understand it, there's something... Let me see if I've got this figured out here. So these four chips here create a signal. Uh, each one has an output pin 13 that comes up to this chip. So pin 13 from this one comes up to here, pin 13 from this one comes up to here, pin 13 from this one comes up to here, pin 13 from this one comes up to here. These are 74166 chips. Known for being a problem. Those go bad all the time. Now all of these are the RAM that are also known for going bad all the time, but as you saw, we did the RAM test and it said they were all fine. Are they? I don't know. Okay. Um, as I understand it, let me see. I'm trying, I'm looking for one particular thing here. What is this pin nine? Pin nine, pin nine, pin nine. Has the resistor. Uh, hmm. Okay. As I understand it, these four chips, or it may be these four, but four of these chips and four of these chips are used in the cocktail mode. So whenever the screen flips upside down, it uses four of these, and whenever it's displayed right up, it uses the other four. I think these are the four that it normally uses, and these are the four that it uses upside down. But I'm not positive. But I've, I've read about that before. And so basically... These are known to go bad and put lines on the screen, just like we're seeing. So there is a test you can do where you can uh, tie up one pin to, um, uh, to five volts and it makes that pin high. Basically what it does is it forces the game to always be in cocktail mode where the screen is always upside down. And so when you do that, it alternates the four chips. So you get what I'm saying? So it normally uses these four chips to send the video out. And by the way, all of these inputs here are coming from over here. So if you look, um, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so see, see how this chip gets D20 and D24, D30 and D34, right? Well, this chip does too, D20, D24, D30, D34. 
but it gets them out on a different pin for whatever reason. So it goes on pin 4 of this 74166 D34, but D34 goes on pin 5 of this 74166. It has something to do with flipping the screen upside down. So this chip gets the same signals that this chip gets. This chip gets the same signals that this chip gets. This chip gets the same signals that this chip gets. This chip gets the same signals that this chip gets. This chip gets, this chip gets. So here's our theory. If one of these four chips is screwed up, when you force it to go into uh, cocktail mode or whatever, it will stop using these four and start using these four. So like, let's say this chip's bad. Well, the quick way to test it is, is to force it into cocktail mode and now it's gonna use this chip. If everything looks good then, well then you know that it's one of these four chips. And then we can figure it out maybe with the, uh, with the uh, logic probe. I've tried probing these before and couldn't figure it out but it, the chip was bad so I don't we're kind of we're shooting in the dark here but so what I'm gonna do is long story short I'm just trying to explain my thought process we're gonna force it to go into cocktail mode and see if when the screen is upside down if all of the lines are backwards and the way you force it to go into cocktail mode is there is this one chip right in the middle of the board one of the RAM decoder chips that you uh, tie pin number 23 high I don't know if they're on this schematic or what but um, I've seen people talk about that online before. I'll look that all up and we'll figure it out. Um, so we'll tie that one pin high and then we'll look at the screen upside down and see if all of the lines are gone. So that's the first thing we're going to try. We are in cocktail mode and there are no lines on the screen. What do you think about that? Now we can't leave it like this. We've got to figure out what's wrong. But, we just successfully narrowed it down to the shift registers. The color RAM must be working just fine because when it's in cocktail mode, everything looks just fine. Okay, so I'll take it back off. I'll take the jumper back off and then uh, we'll hook up the uh, logic probe and see if we can figure out which one of the four shift registers is screwed up. Here are the schematics again. That 2H, so it gets four from four shift registers and four from another shift register. And this screen control is the one that makes it um, flip upside down. So if you tie this line, pin number one, on 2H, if you tie that high, tie it to five volts, it makes the screen flip upside down because it thinks that it's in cocktail mode. And so by doing that, you're only using four of the shift registers and not the four that it usually uses and since you're no longer using the four shift registers we, we can assume that we're no longer using the bad one we're using four good ones and that's how that goes so now we gotta figure out which one of the four it is this is the data sheet of a uh, 74 LS257 which is what that chip is you see pin number one is the select right and so those four that we have on there are A inputs and B inputs. They're labeled as A and B. So if the select is high, it doesn't care what the A's are, and now it cares what the B's are, L and low or high, right? So if the select is high, it is using the B inputs. If the select is low, it is using the A inputs. So that tells us whenever it's... Um, whenever it's uh, uh, right side up, normal operation, we know that the select is low. So that means that normal operation is it uses the A inputs. And whenever it's inverted, because the select signal is high, like we have it right now, it uses the B inputs. So B is upside down, A is right side up. So everything's working when it's upside down, but it's not working when it's right side up. So we need to look at the A inputs to that chip. The A inputs to that chip whoa, all come from 1i, 2i, 3i, and 4i. So we need to look at those four chips, look at the outputs of them, which is pin 
13. One eye, two eye, three eye, and four eye. So we are back up and running with the jumper off so that it's back the right way and the lines are still on the screen. The noise you're hearing is a large inflatable Santa Claus because this is right at Christmas and we've got all these Christmas decorations up. So I have written down all of the things from the schematics. Now you could just print out the schematics, but I like doing it this way. So uh, if you can read my chicken scratch, chip one I, we're, we especially want to look at pin 13, that's the output, but these are the, all the inputs too. So we just want to make sure all those are there. They should be because if one of those was missing, those come from the RAM. So the RAM would probably fail the RAM test. Um, but we're, we're going to look, and we're going to try to see if we know one of these four chips is wrong or it's that 74LS257 might be wrong. But it's probably one of these because these are 74166s known for going bad. Um, not just on this board, on anything they're on. They're pin 13. And just see if we can find one of them that looks different. If we find one that looks different, it's probably screwed up and we can swap it and that should fix our problem. Hopefully. So we're trying to find one I. So this is row one right here. And then row I is this row. So it's these four chips. One of those four chips is bad. Um, let me make sure that's row I. Row I, yeah. So one of these four chips is bad. Okay, so pin 13 on one I. So I count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's 18 pins on each chip. So that means uh, 16, 15, 14, 13. I don't know if you can, I'll try to hold it sideways so you can see it. So that's what that one does. That's what that one does. That's what that one does. And that's what that one does. Okay, so we've got this one. That one, that one, that one seems completely different to me, but you know, this is the type of thing you should really have an oscilloscope to, to check. We're just trying to guess on it with the logic probe. I'm going to guess that one, the second one. 2i. So I'm going to mark on my paper that I think 2i is weird. Um, and then I'm going to go grab another one of those chips and I'm going to try to piggyback it on it. You just squeeze it and put it right on top of that one. Sometimes that will that will fix the problem. I don't know if it will in this instance and I don't know if it will on a, on a count. Sometimes if you have a bad chip, before you swap it, you can take another one and just place it right on top of, on, of it on the board. Um, and that'll tell you. Sometimes too you can tell by heat. One of them will be really hot. I don't feel anything really hot. Hmm. And this is the one that, so all of these four connect to this chip. That was the one that we, um, that, you know, controls the, the, the uh, cocktail flip. All right, so I'm gonna give the 74166 and we'll try piggybacking it. Okay, so see the chip? It's hard to tell, but see how I've got one just bent? I've got the legs bent real tight and I just clipped it on top of the other one so that every leg is touching the leg of the chip under it, right? Can I get a hand? Can I get a hand for figuring another one out? All right, so we got to put it in permanently though. So I'll put a, I'll take that board off and put a little socket in it. We'll put it back in and uh, we'll play it a little bit to make sure it's all right. All right, we got our shift register chip mounted in there. 
Let's uh, see if we can play it. Looks like we're good, right? But you never know until you actually try it. If I can remember how to play it. <laughs> Didn't I have it figured out last time? Didn't I get real good at it? <laughs> sure I did. survival points awarded. Uh. Why not? Come on, you sucker. Don't scare me. <laughs> I was too interested in running, trying to run off the screen to get the egg. You get more points if you catch the egg before it hits the ground. But I'm gonna get them pterodactyl hunting points. I ain't scared. Oh hell, there's two of them. because it's incredibly annoying. I think it's kind of funny. I think I died. Yep. Mm, that game is over. But... That game is over. But that game is working. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ho 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 ho. And another one rides the bus. Okay, so uh, there you go. If you get lines in the screen, check out your shift registers. But before you check your shift registers, force it into uh, cocktail mode um, to check that. Now, I did not come up with that, that little uh, shortcut. That's an old school shortcut I've read about from 20 different people, so. People much, much, much more talented than me at repairing these things came up with that little gimmick a long time ago. But as you can see, it works pretty good. Helps you troubleshoot. I, I had one a long time ago that did the same thing, but I couldn't remember what I did to, um, to fix it. I have a pretty bad memory. Um, so I looked online and I saw some more people talking about it. And then I went, oh yeah, that's right. There was something about cocktail blah 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 then I checked out the schematics figured out what what it must be trying to do looked at the the uh, data sheet for the chip 
and then went from there. You were you were along for the ride, so you know what we did. So anyway, that's that. Hope it helps you fix your joust if you end up with a bad joust. So give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Look at that. One of the cool things about these Williams games is that there's a little light that shines down in front of the screen, and it illuminates the control panel. So the, the marquee, there is a little... See that little light shining up above the screen? Up here? That is, they've made it like that, so that light shines down right in front of the monitor, but doesn't, doesn't shine on the monitor. And it's just enough to light up the control panel. Look how freaking cool that is. Whoever thought that up is a genius. All right, so leave your comments below. Merry Christmas, and I hope you liked the video. We'll see you on the next one.